the Protectors of the Wood podcast. Everything is at stake. The destruction of our planet is becoming real life. This podcast tells the story of misfit teenagers struggling to band together and help our world through this crisis. Episode number 40, Phoebe sees her adventure through, fear nothing. Suddenly, hands gripped her by the shoulders. Phoebe found herself standing back in the cavern. The old man stood before her, face to face, looking into her eyes. I'm here. Come back. It's okay. Oh, the old woman. She said to follow her. Yes, you are following her. Phoebe looked into the calm eyes of the old man and took a deep breath. I'm trying. Here, sit back down for a moment. The old man restored the curtain over the giant blue stone. The candles were burning low. He sat down near her. We will return to the upper world soon, but right now I'm here to help you. Is there anything you want to say or ask? Feel free. I found the old woman coming up out of the ground, and then I lost her in the darkness. And then Abby led me to her. A mob of angry ghosts were in front of the house, and the old woman walked toward them. And you stood up. It's not easy to do. You have met your challenge, and have guidance for the road ahead. Please, was that the woman they call her? Yes, that's her. Our leader in this great struggle, the crisis of our time. We have a leader when we need one the most. A champion for the Earth. Phoebe sat in silence for a few minutes and tears appeared in her eyes. We'll be going back now. Do I have to talk about this? What if I don't want to? She suddenly felt very protective of her experience and wanted to pour over it before any other eyes had a chance to react to it. This is for you, first of all. But I believe you may want to talk it over as time goes by. Think of Reverend Tuck. He's made this subject his primary study in life. Think of Abby. You are following her. Think of your friends. You may be able to help them, and they will help you. The old man paused and looked Phoebe in the eye. And if you'll allow me, I'll give you a word of advice. I see that you understand now about Dreamstone. He motioned to the curtain covering the looming stone, seemingly alive right before them. You know where it comes from and why we are in constant danger and doubt, wondering how to handle this great and terrible responsibility. Please, for my sake, Forgive those who have concealed the truth from you, even lied to you, and all those who are afraid for you, and for themselves. I too am afraid. For you, and for us all. He bowed his head. Promise to forgive. I promise. It was easy. She felt no anger. He looked at her and his whole face smiled. Oh, it does my heart good to see you now, prepared for the future. He put his hand on her shoulder. Somehow it was a formal gesture, like a blessing, an initiation, a sword on the shoulder conferring knighthood. You have received your gift, and so have I. 
Now, we must return and be worthy of it. Come. Phoebe hardly noticed the way or her exhaustion or her fears at all. She focused on following the old man and on treasuring a feeling in her heart. She felt that no fear could ever be greater than what she had overcome already. Soon she was back in the great room and it was nighttime. She embraced her parents and Jeremy and she knew that her eyes were shining. Chi Chi brought her tea and she sat on a couch by the fire. Her father came and sat near her. He was fighting back tears. Phoebe, I'm so sorry I had to, had to lie like that. It was hard, but I wasn't sure you were ready. I'm so sorry. Will you trust me? Yes, it's okay. I do understand. I really do. That story about the mine in the Northridge Mountains, it's been an elaborate hoax for decades. A fragile disguise that still protects the truth. I understand. And as they embraced, her mother and Chi Chi were setting the table in the light of candles and oil lamps. After a quick meal, Phoebe felt that she was falling asleep and sat again by the fire. She had never been so tired, and though she fought against sleep, her eyes closed. When Phoebe opened her eyes again, she saw a small old woman in the candlelight, wearing a neat dark dress, her gray hair pulled back from her forehead in two braids. Her brown face seemed reddened by the sun and weather, and her luminous dark eyes were staring at Phoebe. Oh! Phoebe was startled by the resemblance to her. Could it be? Are you no longer a dream? Are you really here? Now, now, dear. Her wavering, cracked voice was almost sing-song in its rhythms. It's only me, Wendy. We're old friends. Phoebe stared back in surprise. Completely unembarrassed, Wendy continued to examine her carefully. So, I see you've grown up. Yes, yes, I'm so happy. And now, Abby's friend. Isn't fate kind? Phoebe could hardly bear the scrutiny of her gaze. Don't be afraid. It's just me. I wanted to give you a kiss. And the old woman leaned forward, and her lips touched Phoebe's forehead. There, there. You need the sleep. Close your little eyes. Fear nothing. Come follow me It's alright you see There's nothing for you to fear Come on over here You can see me through your
your tears I listen to you I hear what you say Go ahead and cry from your heart I'll see you apart with me There's always a way I'll see you wherever you are You can't be too near or too far Any place you may happen to be I can shine for you to me and you'll surely see how life begins all around see what you found just walk through the door in my world there's always some more the best is in store on and on Don't think that the pain is the end Don't think that it's all that there is In darkness I'll come to you Remember I'll always come through If you want me to It's all Thanks for listening to the Protectors of the Wood podcast. Find all our podcasts, songs, and projects on our website, protectorsofthewood.com. And to all the eco-warriors out there, remember that everyone can make a difference and every action counts.